Like, why did you block me? And you I deleted yeah. all of our chat history, which is a little shady. It's finally happening. No Nonsense Randy is taking on All Nonsense Rishi. And this confrontation is so awkward that I just can't look away. To me, it sounds like just so many lies. I feel like I'm just now figuring out that he is just, I don't know, some kind of pathological liar. With Jen's friends arriving in India to visit her, Jen is beginning to see Rishi in a new and perhaps more accurate light. Now, before we get to the awkward dinner date and the toe-curlingly excruciating confrontation, we need to rewind back to the start of this episode. So, we left Rishi in the last episode, claiming that he had no recollection of any of the shady DMs that he sent to Randy, and we're still none the wiser as to whether he's lying or not. But Jen is determined to get some answers. You know how embarrassing this is for me? That a friend has to tell me, look what your fiance has been sending? What? Why are you sending that person roses? So if he's guilty, why are those messages being blurred out? I can't tell if this drama is just being made to seem worse than it really is. Hence why we've still yet to see any real proof of any of Rishi's supposed creepy messages. But what's notable is that Rishi also doesn't have any good answers to the questions that Jen is asking. In fact, he seems to be laughing at her accusations. Rishi's excuses, him thinking that it was a joke or pulling his leg, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. He is just talking in circles. So we know that Rishi does this when he wants to avoid a conversation. We've seen him do it before when he wants to avoid telling his family about Jen. So this is making him look guilty and Jen certainly isn't buying what he has to say. If he knew that Randy was her friend, why didn't he stop messaging her? Why didn't he tell Jen that her friend was hitting on him? And why did he block her? If he knew that she was my friend, why wouldn't he just call her out on it or tell me about it? It's so hard because I want to believe him. She was trying to message more and uh, putting more pressure on me. I find it like it's inappropriate, so that's why I blocked her. Just look at Rishi's face here. He can't seem to stop smiling or laughing about this whole situation. And it's really coming across as him being quite smug. Like, does he find Jen's insecurity funny? Does he think he won't get caught? Jen's getting upset. And Rishi, in what can only be a moment of impulse, offers Jen the opportunity to snoop on his phone. Which, of course, Jen takes him up on. But the problem is, when I look at his phone, everything's in Hindi. She scrolled for a moment and she find nothing. Yep, there's that smile again. No wonder he offered his phone. He knew that Jen wouldn't be able to understand anything. Jen has nowhere to go from here. She can't prove her suspicions. And as annoying as it is, a smug Rishi knows this. Which means he's not going to own up to anything. So Jen takes a different approach. She explains to Rishi why she has so little trust in him, calling him out for not telling his family about her. Telling your family about me. Did I say I will not say? No, you just keep putting it off. I'm not keep putting it off. It's really frustrating to watch. Rishi seems incapable of admitting any wrongdoing. He's the perfect man. He'd never cheat. He'd never lie. He'd never put off telling his family about Jen. Except the evidence says otherwise. He's done, or at least suspected of doing, every single one of those things that he denies. So when exactly will he tell his family about Jen? Well, Rishi decides that now is a good time to tell her what his astrologer friend said. I have a conversation with Nitesh yesterday. He told me last night that uh, the best date is 2 of August and 4 p.m. That is two months away, and Jen is absolutely speechless. She takes the news exactly as you'd expect someone who doesn't believe in astrology to take it. Sounds like bull****. And part of the reason why it sounds like such bull****, 
One of the main reasons why Jen is having trouble trusting her fiancé is precisely because he tries to evade problems and laugh them off. I think everything seems kind of like a joke to you, like it's not serious. The thing is, because it was not a big issue, that's why I'm taking it very light. Rishi tells Jen that she's making a big deal out of nothing. She should let it go, which is exactly what you'd expect someone to say if they were guilty. But what he doesn't realise is that his evasiveness is making Jen question their relationship. And that is only going to get worse, because today's the day Jen's friends Randy and Myra have arrived in India. I am at the end of my rope, so having my friends come all this way to help me sort it out means the world to me. So what exactly are Randy and Myra doing here? thousands of miles from home. Are they dedicated and loyal friends or desperate for screen time? I don't know about you, but I find it a bit shifty how involved in Jen's business, Randy in particular, is determined to be. Like this goes beyond normal friendship. And with Jen and Rishi's relationship more unstable than ever, they've arrived at the perfect time to cause maximum disruption. I'm having some sensory overload. It's hot, noisy. Cars are honking everywhere. It's very different. Different. Not bad, just different. No way. India, different to America? Surely not. Like, what were they expecting? Now, I'm not exactly sure why Jen chose to arrive by rickshaw rather than taxi. That doesn't exactly help matters, especially as her friends have luggage. But the girls are good sports. They kind of enjoy the chaos of the ride home. That is until they see this. Oh! What? Oh! What happened? What happened? This was puked on the side of the bus. Out the bus. And the bewilderment continues when they arrive at Jen's apartment. When Jen shows them the bathroom, this is how they react. So it's like glamping. Like it is kind of like glamping, but it, with air conditioning. But like forever. Yeah. <laughs> Randy and Myra are giving off mean girl energy. They're, they're giggling to themselves and looking down their noses at the situation that Jen finds herself in. And look, Jen may be a lot of things, but we've never once seen her complain or act privileged about all the adjustments she's had to make to live in India. She's embraced Indian life wholeheartedly, so she chooses to ignore the snide comments. And instead, she takes her friends up to the roof for drinks. And it's here that she reveals Rishi wants to wait two months before he tells his family about her. This is just crap. No, that agree. is just such that is laughable. Well, that's just like, that's like the ultimate excuse. Yeah. Aren't you annoyed? I'm so annoyed. After being gaslighted by Rishi, Jen must feel quite validated by this response. Finally, someone's acting like it's as big a deal as she feels it is. But her friends don't stop there. After Jen explains that she's not sleeping with Rishi until they get married, Randy and Myra take the opportunity to stir the pot a little more. I hate to say this, but from personal experience, if a man is not asking you to have sex with him, he's asking someone else. That passing comment about her own personal experiences might explain a lot. Maybe Randy's projecting her own hurt onto Rishi. Now, when Jen goes on to explain to Randy that Rishi's excuse for his messages was because he claimed he knew Randy and Jen were friends, it was all just a big joke. Randy just stays quiet. Her facial expressions don't change at all, which, considering the fact she always seems to have something to say, struck me as quite odd. Like, and if you did really find scary. out that he was cheating on you, what would you do? I'd be done. I just don't, I don't know where to go from here. Well, that's why we're here. We'll help you figure that out. And while that is the right thing to say, I don't think Randy and Myra are particularly interested in helping Jen and Rishi stay together. They've come over there with their mind made up about him. They want to help Jen find out the truth. They want to convince her to leave him and come back to America. And honestly, they might be right in doing that. 
they're not the only ones that think Rishi is suspicious. Something doesn't feel right. Yeah, something's off in this. And, and I think that's the main reason that we wanted to come over here so that we could kind of put a finger on it and open her eyes to the BS. When we join the ladies the next day, they're all dolled up and they're ready to go and meet Rishi. Jen still has this naive hope that Myra and Randy will actually like him, which at this point seems highly improbable. Just look at Randy's face in the taxi. There's zero room for love here. She's ready to attack. But these girls need to be careful. There's a fine line between good friendship and stirring the pot. I am asking Rishi out the gate why he blocked me because I don't want to waste anyone's time. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste any more of Jen's time. I want to know if this guy is the real deal or if he's a faker. Rishi's sitting waiting for them at this fancy restaurant. But what's that on the table in front of him? Is that two phones? Hmm, something to keep an eye on. Maybe there's some English messages on the second phone. I wonder how prepared Rishi is for this lunch. And by prepared, I mean how thoroughly he's covered his tracks. Rishi is clearly nervous about seeing Randy in person. And it's interesting how this entire lunch has suddenly become all about Randy. How are you? How's you? Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good to nice see to you. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, can someone please share the joke? What's so funny? You can tell just how nervous Rishi is from that hug. It went on a tad too long, didn't it? He's overcompensating. He's trying to be friendly, but it's so transparent. And after some awkward silence and a bit of small talk, Rishi decides to be brave for once. He brings up the elephant in the room, his messages. I thought like uh, you are guys uh, pulling my leg at that time because I wanted to know that uh, you are alone over there, you are with Myra, you are with Jane or something like that. Okay, so I'm really sorry, but I can't show you the full entire long-winded reply because I'll get copyright claims. But trust me, Rishi's rambling response was long and made literally zero sense. He stood by his I thought it was a joke story and it turns out he tried to make a phone call to Randy but his excuse for making the call was he thought that Jen was with Randy. Huh? Like everyone's confused. Myra is having the time of her life watching Rishi squirm. Randy isn't buying it and Jen is totally over it. Why did you block me? Okay, and you I deleted yeah. all of our chat history, which is a little shady. Well, well, well. This is the first we're hearing of this. For all these weeks, I've been asking to see evidence, but now it's clear why we haven't been able to see any. All of their messages have been deleted or have disappeared after Rishi blocked Randy. And again, it's all looking very suspicious. So why did Rishi block Randy? So your block list is when you feel something's inappropriate or not yeah. going the right way? Yeah. Okay. But Let me show you it's all in request. Now the good news here is Rishi has both his phones on the table and he seems open to showing all his messages, at least from one of the phones. And by showing his inbox, he's able to prove that he's ignored flirtatious messages. This seems to be a big step because it seems very genuine and the girls appear to be softening to him. But it does raise the question, why didn't he show this to Jen at the spa? Why are the messages in English today, but Hindi last time? With that being said, everyone sat round the table seems convinced. Well, if he had something to hide, he wouldn't have shown you that. That's true. Even my friends are seeming to warm up to him, so I don't know, maybe things are just getting lost in translation. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> I was expecting more of a fight from Randy, but it seems like everyone's willing to let it go. But while the questions about cheating might be over, the friends are just getting started with Rishi, because now attention turns to why he hasn't told his family about Jen. Why not tell your family you've got a fiancé, especially considering they're trying to find you a bride? Are they still on the hunt to find you a wife, Rishi? They, they were looking and I didn't know about that, so... He didn't know about it, so... supposedly. Hang on a minute, he didn't know. That doesn't seem right. Rishi's about to get tripped up by his own lies. Because while he claims he didn't know that his family were trying to set him up, he goes on to immediately contradict himself. When was the last time 
your family tried to set you up. Like, uh, it happened before the last time she visited. How can he claim that he didn't know his family were trying to set him up? At least not in time to be able to tell Jen about it, whilst also accepting they tried to set him up before Jen's last visit. It just doesn't make sense. Didn't Rishi study law? Shouldn't he be better at patching up these holes, making a cover story for himself? Jen isn't buying what he's saying. How many did they present to you, roughly? Two or three at once. Two or three? Uh-huh, in a and one And yet you didn't know they were looking for you. Do you see how that's a total lie? Rishi has just been caught red-handed again. How many more times is Jen going to go through this? Rishi is digging himself further into a hole while he tries to explain himself. But Jen can't listen to his excuses any longer, and she leaves the table. Maybe having her friends there watching is making her realise how stupid she's been buying Rishi's lies for as long as she has. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'll be right back. You just found out they're looking for you, yet you rejected a variety of options for the last two years? Like... This might just be the straw that broke the camel's back. Jen seems like she's had enough. And while this lie isn't particularly worse than any of his others, her reaction suggests that she might be tapping out of this relationship. This might just be one lie too many. To me, it sounds like just so many lies. I feel like I'm just now figuring out that he is just, I don't know, some kind of pathological liar. That is a stark revelation, but it's quite hard to dispute. And you've got to imagine it's quite hard to come back from. How do you rebuild trust in a relationship when it's already shaken and you've just realized you're engaged to a pathological liar? Is there any coming back from this? And more to the point, are there any more lies yet to come out of the woodwork?